Hey there, Internet. This is Sal Good Sam. This is a spilt ink video for my dynamic drawing students, especially my Patreon student patrons. So this is a video talking about using uh, Google Earth to experiment with the rule of thirds and golden mean grid, which is what just faded in in front of you. Keep in mind, you can do this on a camera, too. They usually have a, a rule of thirds grid you can put up. This is a location in Sweden, uh, I believe. And as you can see, the rule of thirds is the larger uh, nine panel grid you see there. Within the center cross is a golden mean grid. Look for links about those explaining all that stuff in the description below. And you use it to kind of plot where you want things in a location to be. And normally you don't actually have it over an image like this. I created this video just to illustrate something I say in class a lot, which is that you can use the existing frame. I mean, when you go out in, into the world, you kind of have to hold your hands up or just imagine how you're going to crop a shot when you're drawing it. Um, use landmarks and the lo location, like the edge of something or the, the place where something meets something else to figure out the framing. But here, when you're using uh, Google Earth or one of the other programs like this, uh, you can actually take advantage of the fact there is a frame. And then within that, try to see the, the evenly divided in threes, the rule of thirds grid here. And you see how things sort of fall in place. You want to try to frame parts of the scene within one of the nine quadrants, or maybe off to one side more into uh, uh, six of them on one side or six on the other side. This is a Peggy's Cove location that we actually used in class recently, and the students uh, drew it, and we played around. This was the, the, the sweetest spot we found for the location. That's what we drew. So the cave is now nested in the center, bottom right corner of the center quadrant. And you can move it around. There are different places it could be in the shot. But that one felt the nicest to us. That's what we drew it with. Usually you put things in the middle of one of the quadrants to make them feel more static and on one of the intersections to make them feel a bit more dynamic or kind of resonant. A lot of people consider those to be kind of the sweet spots. If you push the cave off to the left more, as we're going to see in a minute, it sort of stops working quite as well. It can work. I think it feels like there needs to be a foreground object, like maybe a figure from the elbows up standing close to us here or her knees up at that angle, filling that space to the right. Otherwise, it seems empty. This, narrative of the sky and the cave, this lot shot, low shot works as well. It's not so bad. But I kind of like what we lost at the top when it was lower, like that. That really feels like the sweetest spot on this sh shot. You could freeze the frame and try to draw it. Here's a, an old gas station, roadside gas station, tow truck. It's a pretty cool location. I found it, and uh, the last one, the last two actually, no, sorry, the first one and this one I found from a, 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 dig, a virtual plein air group on Facebook. I'll put the link in the description as well. People have been using them for location shots. Someone drew a different angle of this, but I really like this angle. Let's get to zoom in, get it cropped to how we used it in class. We also use this one in class with the the truck and pump center sh shot like that. And uh, we talked a lot in class about how the horizon line is sort of right between the roof line of the gas station and the top of the fence, basically right now where the golden mean line was. So now we've, we've just moved the truck up to so the pump is at the top quite according to see how that looks. It doesn't quite work as well. I don't think that this is the greatest spot. How about over here in the bottom right quadrant? No, the left right quadrant. No. It works best when it's in the middle, I think. I think we had the right framing. If you zoomed in, it's got less stuff in it. Then you could probably move around to these other quadrants. But before, it was just too busy, but now we're focusing the story a bit. So this is a great way of thinking about framing the shots. You may not actually have some way of imposing the, the rule of thirds grid on the shot like this or the golden mean one inside. I, I like the two because I think of the spaces between the double lines as kind of being more intense. But even if you don't have a way to do this yourself at home, this is a great way to think about it when you're looking at it through Google Earth uh, and sort of try to imagine those lines there. Uh, 
the the, the rule of thirds grid is the easiest because it's just three equally proportioned uh, columns and rows making nine cells. Um, and again, the the vertical and horizontal lines where they intersect are considered kind of resident hotspots, and uh, some more static or at rest positions are within the center of each cell. Give it a whirl, see what happens.